Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Groups Forum. My name is uh, Yoko Iwama, Professor of National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies, Groups. I will be serving as a moderator today. Group Sorum aims at informing policy debates by inviting leaders in various fields. It is a public event and at the same time educational event, giving our uh, students opportunities to join and benefit from the lectures and discussions. Um, currently, we are facing a very uncertain and challenging future, a declining birth rate, an aging population, shortage of healthcare providers in especially sparsely populated areas, and collapse of the long-held Japanese-style employment. Under such situation, a new field of economics is attracting attention as a practical learning that has the potential to solve the issues piling up in Japanese society. Uh, this is called market design. What is market design and how can it help us solve the social problems lying ahead of us? Today, we welcome a wonderful speaker, Dr. Fuhito Kojima, to introduce, use, as introduce us to this idea of market design. Uh, let me introduce our speaker. Dr. Fuhito Kojima is professor in the Department of Economics at the University of Tokyo and a director, the first director of the University of Tokyo Market Design Center. Dr. Kojima received his BA in economics from University of Tokyo and his PhD in economics from Harvard University. He was a postdoctoral fellow of Cold Foundation at Yale University, a visiting assistant professor in the Department of Economics at Columbia University, and a professor in the Department of Economics at Stanford University before joining the University of Tokyo in September 2020. His research interests include market design, matching theory, and game theory. So let us welcome Dr. Fujito Kojima. He will speak about science for better institutions, economics of market design. So we'll ask her, him to speak for 40 to 45 minutes, and we will have panel discussions with groups, faculty, and students after that. Then we will open uh, to Q&A sessions with the wider audience. And you are welcome to speak up by pressing the raise hand button or putting your questions in the Q&A box uh, bottom of the Zoom screen. So welcome, Dr. Kojima, and the floor is yours. Um, thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Iwama. Um, so uh, I'm Fushito Kojima, um, and thank you for everybody for uh, joining us uh, for, uh, for the group. So let me begin by sharing my um, presentation slides. So please give me a several seconds, okay? Right. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so uh, I a uh, um so I'm showing the first slide um of my talk. So if anybody has um uh, problems uh, seeing the slide, please uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh uh let's let's begin. Okay. So um so I actually prepared one slide to introduce myself, but I think um uh, Iwama san already um uh, introduced me, so let me not spend too much time on it. But then, uh, so uh, I have been, uh, uh, however, um, interested in two things. So the uh, matching theory that uh, and the uh, market design. So these are the uh, sort of like um, the uh, jargon uh, used in economics. So uh, please keep those two words, uh, two two two, uh, two keywords uh, in mind in what follows. Okay. So my um, aim for today is maybe threefold. So first is uh, to introduce you 
to this field of market design and machine theory, uh, explain uh, what it is, what it is intended to solve, and what are the challenges. And uh, secondly, I would like to explain how the ideas from this uh, uh, theory and maybe academic thoughts in general uh, have been applied in very specific contexts. Okay, uh, to design institutions in Japan and public, uh, especially in Japan. Well, um, well, of course, the, you do not have to be um, be a Japanese citizen or uh, uh, living living in Japan in order to get some um, to hopefully get some in the, uh, insight from these experiences. Uh, I'm aware that uh, some of you are from Japan and some uh, many of you are not from Japan. So uh, my hope is that the, by looking at the uh, some detailed um, policy issues in the Japanese context, uh, you will also be able to possibly begin thinking about using that uh, ideas from those and issues uh, in your uh, own own profession and in your own uh, in 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 a country and so on. So these are the second uh, aim for today. And the third and last one is uh, for me to learn uh, from you and um, in terms of the ideas for the research. And also, uh, I'd like to get you to, uh, ho I hope that you will share your experiences if you have done um, uh, some um, works related to uh, uh, issues uh, discussed today and, and or you are facing some problem in, in your own environment. Okay, so uh, as I will uh, uh, hopefully convey to you that some of the theory is uh, that academic uh, research is really motivated by, uh, by and tied to uh, very uh, uh, practical issues uh, facing society. So uh, I would like you to be able to sort of like give me the, uh, some, uh, uh, some insight uh, from your experience. Okay, that is probably a slightly long, um, uh, um, uh, uh, preview. So let me actually get into the uh, uh, context, uh, the, uh, actual content. All right. So I already said that there are two keywords. One is matching theory, and the other one is market design. Okay. So let me explain both of these two terms. Okay. So matching theory is a field of study, academic field of study, mainly in economics, but also um also in the intersection between economics and some other fields such as uh, the applied math, uh, operations research, uh, computer science, and so on. And uh, it's a theory um, to think about how to assign the, uh, well, how to match uh, uh, people with people, uh, people with institutions, or uh, people with uh, goods and services, okay? Well, in other words, well, matching theory is what it sounds uh, like it is, right? So the um, the question is uh, um, uh, for us to think about what does it mean for matching to be successful? And uh, after figuring out what it means, then uh, we will think about how to find a desirable good matches and uh, uh, study how to realize such good matches. Okay, well. Uh, that's that's a study, and the you might uh, you might wonder why. Well, that sounds like a sort of applied math problem, maybe discrete optimization kind of problem. Uh, why do I care? Well, why do people care as economists? Why is that a field in economics, right? Um, and uh, let me just give a sort of tentative answer for today by saying the obvious. Okay. Um, there are lots of problems in economy or uh, in society in general, and many problems you face in the society have this matching as a very important feature. Okay, uh, so many of you uh, are, uh, are currently or uh, are in colleges or have well have graduated from colleges, and uh, maybe you are a group, group student. Uh, Maybe you are considering going to uh, advanced um, uh, advanced degrees and so on. Well, uh, if you think of college admissions, for example, well, that's a very large scale match between students, uh, student applicants, and the colleges, right? And the same for grad school, okay? And that's the education uh, matching in the education setting, which most of you uh, have experienced. 
And after that, uh, most of you probably went for or, or hunting the job, hunting for the job, right? So that's a matching between employees and employers, obviously. And of course, the in marriage and other types of mating is a matching problem. And even the allocation of some goods and services has this matching uh, component. So uh, one uh, uh, one particular issue that I have worked on uh, involves the, how to uh, distribute the uh, vaccines uh, over the COVID uh, under the COVID pandemic. Okay, so these are the kind of examples that you will face uh, over and over and over again in your life that involves matching, and that's a point one. And the second point is that well, uh, matching is important, and moreover, it is oftentimes really hard to uh, do a good good job in matching. Right. Uh, so if you are applying for the colleges, well, a uh, lot of, I think you are from many different regions, but to, to give an example in the Japanese setting. So if you are uh, um, applying for the college, uh, typically you will need to uh, apply for different colleges and then, um, uh, and uh, oftentimes uh, uh, take the exam specifically done by that, uh, for, for, for the particular college. And then there's a very difficult game or difficult decision problem you are facing here. Uh, uh, let's say if you uh, if you uh, if your first choice college is uh, college A and the second choice is college B, but suppose that A and B are, uh, are actually run the exam just for one day and on one day and they are on the same day, then that means that you should you you have a very difficult problem of deciding whether or uh, whether to uh, uh, take the exam at college A or college B, okay? Well, applying for college A means you cannot be matched with college B and um, vice versa, right? So uh, the, in addition to all the uh, difficult preparation and study for or entering the colleges, you are uh, even more stressed by needing to strategize, okay? And deciding whether, uh, uh, I have a chance to get into college A or college B, okay? And what do you expect? You What you expect to happen is that, well, chances are that, well, maybe I'm trying to uh, avoid the risk and uh, take the college B, which is, let's say, a, a less prestigious than, than prestigious than college A, although I actually like uh, A better than B, uh, I might take the exam at B. However, it turns out uh, after the fact that I would have been admitted in college A if I were to apply, but I couldn't, okay? So that's an unhappy situation. And uh, on the other hand, if I take the, uh, take the risk and apply to college A, uh, take the exam, I get uh, I, I did not uh, get accepted. It, uh, and it might be the case that if I were to apply to college B, then uh, I would have been accepted, but because I have forgone, uh, I have been, uh, 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 I, I have uh, applied to A and, and not to B, I cannot get into uh, get, get into uh, college B, okay? So this kind of friction uh, is really stressful for applicants and oftentimes results in a mismatch, okay? Which is uh, the situation in which uh, someone would like to be matched with certain uh, uh, certain outcome, in this example, the desired college. However, the a match does not realize between this uh, college and students, okay? And uh, all the similar things happen all the time, like job, uh, in the labor market. That's very oftentimes the case that, well, your employer may say that, hey, congratulations, we will make an offer to you. Uh, by the way, um, by the way, please say a yes or no within one week or one day or uh, just immediately. Okay. In that case, uh, you might be a, a pressure, feel pressure to say yes to the employer. Uh, but then uh, next day you might uh, get a, a job offer from somewhere else. But it, since you have already signed the contract, you cannot actually move to a better position. So uh, left in their own hands, the uh, for the participants of the quote unquote markets, okay, the, it's really hard to actually realize a good match. So that is a problem. 
And uh, that is why the economists are interested in uh, studying this problem, precisely because the we as economists consider the, the, the this is a, not a problem of human beings, rather it's a problem of the institutions or mechanisms in economic jargon, meaning that um, if we were to be able to make a sort of like uh, um, assistance system, maybe guided by computers, maybe guided by job matching rules and so on, then uh, the match may be made better, uh, may be better for everybody. Um, so for that reason, uh, the market matching theorists uh, consider not only the uh, good matches in the abstract, but also use that idea to design the uh, matching mechanisms in the, uh, in, the, in the social context. And that applied field is called market design. Okay? So market might sound like uh, we are going to just talk about things like stock markets or commodity markets and so on. But uh, actually, economists oftentimes use the word markets um, uh, um, uh, more broadly. So in these examples, um, labor markets maybe arguably are what people think of as markets. But uh, in other cases, such as college admission, even marriage, and maybe the distribution of public, uh, publicly available goods like vaccination. So these are also referred to as markets uh, by economists. And we try to use the insight from uh, academic study to design markets in real world. Okay, so that is a market design. Um, oh, just in case. So we have something like 30 minutes for questions and answers. Uh, but if you have very quick uh, clarification question or anything like that, uh, please feel free to uh, interrupt. Otherwise, I will just uh, continue. OK, I guess it looks like I can continue for the moment. Now, the question is, OK, so is there any consensus among researchers? What is a good way to organize matching uh, mechanisms? So that's the next question. Of course, the academics argue over many, many things, and there are lots of unresolved issues. But fortunately, uh, the, the core uh, like of what to do is kind of like already in a, 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 uh, reached the consensus among the researchers. So let me talk about that. There are, roughly speaking, two things that the matchmaker must do. Okay, so now you imagine that you are uh, a public po policy maker deciding maybe the uh, labor market rules, okay? The, uh, there are two things to do. First, as a designer of the mechanism, you should ask participants of this quote unquote markets about their preferences, okay? And their preferences uh, in a pretty detailed manner. Uh, namely, um, you should ask uh, students about which school is uh, their first choice, which one is a second choice, and so on and so on. And similarly to colleges, okay? Maybe this is obvious, right? So if you want to match people with people or people with like uh, like colleges, you know, or, or it, it makes sense to ask their preferences. But let me actually emphasize that this may not be even obvious to many people actually, because well, uh, in let's say a allocation of uh, personnel in the institutions like schools or in the school or in the in the in the, in the labor uh, in the in the workplaces, oftentimes the it is a job of the personnel division to decide who should go where, and oftentimes uh, the people are not even asked to uh, uh, where they are happy to go uh, go to, and similarly uh, yeah uh, and uh, and um, that kind of. Uh, 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 system has been running for a long time, including uh, some labor markets, such as the medical match that I will uh, I now talk about. So the, in the in the Japanese um, medical profession, uh, almost until 2003, the uh, 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 grad students who graduate from medical schools are basically ordered, uh, well, in in practice, uh, by the senior doctors or like uh, university professors to uh, to a particular residence uh, uh, hospital residency programs. Okay, so that is not obvious. And uh, you, because I I just began to talk about the medical match. Let me mention that now in the medical match, the uh, since two thousand three, the uh, actually uh, they I mean medical profession decided to follow this advice. Uh, I just gave, well, not me, but the advice given by the uh, community. 
Um, and uh, if you look at the e right hand side, so this, this is actually a snippet from the e explanatory e website uh, run by the uh, Japanese medical organization. And uh, for those of you who can read the Japanese, so this this part it says, well, uh, uh, submit the ranking of the uh, uh, of the uh, hospital residency training program in your order of preferences. So this is some uh, particular doctor's first choice hospital. Uh, this is a second choice, and this is third choice, and so on. Okay, so this is uh, exactly what uh, is being done currently in this labor market. So that's a point one. The point two uh, is maybe a little bit subtle, but equally important. So now uh, I have argued that the, the make, matchmaker needs to get this valuable information about what people like, uh, uh, what their preferences are. Because otherwise, well, without knowing that, it's it's almost impossible to decide where the, uh, someone would be happy to uh, be assigned, right? So that makes a lot of sense. And indeed, many institutions uh, do that, actually, to some extent. However, the, the problem in most uh, organizations is that even if they ask uh, preferences of the participants, then how it's it's not oftentimes efficient uh, when it comes to uh, how they use that information. So you might be in a situation where the your personnel divisions chief asks you about which division, which department of the of the company you would like to be assigned to. So you you express preferences. However, uh, 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 at, when 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 this assignment happens, then uh, you might be sent to somewhere completely different. Okay, so you might have that experience, and that is partly because the, the personnel or officers may not exactly know how to use that information. They might just forget, or uh, or if there are multiple people. Uh, or, having the same preferences over the particular uh, department of the e e uh, of the company they may not have a well defined rule to decide which uh, which of these applicants should uh, get in and which which should not so it's very hard to do it by hand for that reason the e this is sort of the keyword. So we usually use certain rule rule based uh, assignment system in the form of algorithm meaning that um, think of the preference, preferences submitted by the participants as the input of this algorithm, and then use a computer to basically read all the information that is submitted, and then uh, following certain rules and uh, uh, make an assignment. And by doing so, uh, you can avoid forgetting to use uh, forgetting forgetting to use uh, valuable information in the form of preferences submitted, uh, and also follow a particular rule uh, to. Uh, 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 which can can probably shown to uh, uh, find a good match, okay? Right. Uh, of course, algorithm is a buzzword these days, but uh, how to design algorithm is actually very non-trivial. And uh, because, well, uh, if you just do the uh, random, very random way of uh, assigning, you can do that in the computer, but then uh, there's no guarantee that the outcome is good. So of course we need to care about uh, uh, about good outcomes. So typically uh, in economic jargon, efficiency, fairness, and the incentives. So these things should be considered. All right. Uh, okay. Ah. So before actually going there, so because uh, I I understand that some of you are from the. Uh, 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 the different um, types of uh, uh, societies. So uh, I like to also mention that um, the algorithm-based uh, assignment has uh, an additional benefit because the that are usually rule-based, and you can commit to if you can commit to the algorithm, then that can also uh, uh, prevent the uh, uh, some bad things such as nepotism and corruption. Okay, so that is another reason that this type of uh, algorithm-based assignment may be preferred. Okay, so now the question is, what kind of algorithm? Okay, um, so uh, today is not meant to be a full-fledged uh, sort of like a lecture in the in my in university. So I mean, the, in the usual class. So let me be a bit quick, but let me still. This is still an important part. So let me spend some time. Fortunately, the the um, the basic um, template 
for good algorithm has been long known actually. And that is called the, so, uh, the Gale Shapley algorithm. Gale is this inventor of this algorithm, and Shapley is the other inventor of the algorithm. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a computer algorithm which kind of mimics the real world um, uh, real world negotiation in the labor market, but in a better way. So let me explain. So step zero is a stage in which the uh, algorithm uh, needs to uh, get the input. Here, the input of uh, information is well, like I already said, the uh, participants uh, participants submit preferences about where they would like to go to, who, who they are want to be matched to, so in the uh, form of list of the uh, um, uh, uh, best and second choice and so on. And uh, after that, uh, uh, the remaining part of the negotiation is done virtually in the computer. And that is uh, here. And the, it's uh, just an iterative algorithm uh, mimicking some kind of bargaining. So uh, namely, the uh, Imagine that the students just apply to their first choice, first choice. Okay, so I guess, uh, okay, I'm using university, so uh, as a word, but you can think of a university or a firm or a company and so on, uh, depending on the context. Anyway, the students apply to the first choice university, and then university says um, one of the two things. The university could say no, you are not eligible, or you you are not no, not good enough to be in the, in the uh, our school. Then the student is rejected. If not, they do not immediately get the acceptance. Rather, they get provisional acceptance. Okay, i.e., the student uh, the university just keeps that applicant on the list. Okay, waiting list. Okay, and then uh, uh, in the uh, second step and so on. The uh, students who are not kept by the university, that can happen either because the student had applied to uh, some, some university but got rejected, in which case the student needs to apply to the next choice. Uh, or if the student has not been processed yet at all, then they apply to the first choice. Anyways, the, if that happens, then basically universities get the more and more applicants, and they need to decide who to accept and who to reject. Okay, and then uh, the rough idea is to do it like many, 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 many times. All right, and of course, in the usual neighbor market or the college admission, uh, in the real time, you cannot do that many, 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 many times, right? So, like uh, in the example I gave uh, earlier, the uh, the uh, two schools may need to uh, do the same uh, section on the same day, in which case the students can apply to only one school. But in the computer, because they have already gotten all the necessary information about preferences, they can do it basically virtually limitless time, uh, times, right? And the uh, key point is that, well, um, instead of letting people to bargain themselves with a lot of uh, effort and uh, real-time frictions, the computer will do it until uh, there's no more need for negotiation, okay? Which is uh, done by uh, basically f uh, having students apply to their uh, desired choices from the top of using a computer, and when they are rejected, then they will apply to the next choice and so on. And every time that happens, the, uh, the uh, receiving side, in this case, the university, will reselect the best, uh, best set of applicants. Okay. So that is algorithm. And um, so this is a real, turns out to be a really good algorithm. It's almost like a miracle. So uh, here's a mathematical result, which I call a fundamental theorem of matching theory. And it says the following. Suppose that uh, the matching is decided by running this algorithm, then um, you can show that uh, there is no mismatches. OK? Uh, mismatch here means a pair of a student and the university uh, who are currently not matched in this output of the algorithm. However, they would rather be matched with each other. Okay, if such a thing happens, then you know the student is unhappy because uh, he or she is not matched to their desired school. But then the school also thinks that hey, this applicant is uh, better than one of the students who are admitted. So the uh, university is also unhappy. So if we have this kind of a mutually dissatisfied pair, who would rather be matched by themselves rather than uh, uh, following the proposed uh, produced match by the algorithm, then the algorithm uh, did not a good job, right? 
So in other words, the e, 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 fortunately, this idea of running the algorithm many, many times, so to eliminate that kind of uh, room anymore, will actually uh, work to uh, eliminate all uh, uh, mismatches of that form. Okay. So that fact is not obvious, but you can actually uh, show that. Okay. And there are other good properties. Uh, 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 so fundamental theorem two is that the so-called strategy proofness. Um, so this is a jargon you may not have heard of before. Um, the, uh, we say that the matching mechanism is strategy proof if uh, for for the participants, in this case applicants, the, uh, the uh, submitting the true preferences is a best strategy for themselves. Okay. Um, and in other words, you cannot game the system by strategically e e e submitted preferences. Okay. So that is actually a surprising result because, well, if we think of, let's say, um, labor market, and then uh, suppose that you are interviewing with some 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 company, and maybe the some the company asks you whether they uh, is it uh, are we are we your first choice? Then I bet that you will say that yes, uh, definitely you are first choice. But I guess you would say that to every single company that you uh, interview for, right? And uh, so this is a case in which uh, saying the what is the first choice is uh, uh, you know. Telling the true preferences uh, and saying that, well, you are just the choice for me is really a bad idea. Uh, but the algorithm is set up in such a way that uh, you do not gain anything by saying uh, making that kind of strategizing. And that's important because uh, by doing that, uh, the matchmaker can get the real or true, inform true preferences information, and hence uh, having a good matches according to the submitted preferences is uh, actually a good match. And that is usually not guaranteed in any other system. And moreover, because in the long-term planning for the public policy perspective, the, because the applicants are expected to submit true preferences, so you can use that information for long-term planning. For example, a, in the education authority may use this kind of system for the college, uh, school admission. Then uh, education authority would get the valuable information about what kind of schools or school programs uh, get, uh, uh, get a lot of applicants, uh, so that there's a big demand, uh, so that they could uh, consider uh, increasing programs similar to it. But you cannot do that if the mechanism is not strategy proof, right? Ah, another thing, well, I kind of said that it's a computer algorithm and you might think that it means it's, it's hard to implement, but it turns out that this is really, a really, really, really simple uh, computer algorithm. Uh, you can probably do it with five or six uh, uh, lines or something like that. Uh, indeed, oftentimes this, uh, this algorithm is one of the first uh, assignment, home, homework assignment in, in the college uh, computer science uh, um, uh, classes usually, okay? And the computational resource is very, very small as well. Okay, so now, um, so the question is, okay, so the theory is great. So does it work? And the answer is that it does, okay? So, um, okay. So uh, I have already mentioned labor market, okay? Um, in the form of medical match, a medical match. So the longest history is in the United States. So in the US, the medical internship, uh, which is now called residence, uh, occurred in around the year one, uh, 1900. And then around that time, it's a sort of decentralized matching market. And that without in a lot of mismatches and also the, what is called unleavening, which is a, a basic early contracting. Okay. So that was the, basically the chaotic situation, just as many labor markets right now. So the a medical profession get got together and decided to introduce the a, a algorithm. And that algorithm is actually, well, actually a small variation of the gale shapley algorithm that I mentioned. And uh, this algorithm is even in use now, so after more than 70 years. So that's amazing. And indeed, uh, that led to the expansion of this uh, to many countries, including Japan, which I mentioned earlier. 
Um, I can go on, go on, go on with a lot of examples, but let me just mention some of the public policy kind of things that you may be interested in, many of you are maybe interested in. The college admissions also are uh, oftentimes and increasingly uh, organized using algorithms. Some of them are really this gale shabby algorithm. Some are not as good uh, as that one, but still assisted by uh, algorithms. And unfortunately, the Japan and US are the exceptions. So they, as far as I know, they do not use it. Uh, but uh, as of now, uh, the uh, number I found uh, said that uh, about 50 countries and regions use it. They use some form of algorithm, okay? Uh, to basically assist the match between students and colleges. And in the United States, there are lots of uh, high profile cases in the uh, secondary or elementary education. The most famous is in New York City. So uh, it, it has introduced a gay Shapti algorithm about 20 years ago. And that actually had a very big impact. So uh, before the introduction of the algorithm, the system just didn't work. So about 30% of the, uh, uh, the uh, rising uh, high school students were not assigned to any of the public school in, the, in New York City that they, they listed in their preferences. Uh, so they, and immediately after changing the algorithm, that number dropped by 90%, okay? So the one tenth is uh, the number of people are matched, and that was a big success. So uh, there are lots of uh, school districts, and uh, actually in and outside of the U.S. that use similar systems right now. In Japan, uh, these are largely not introduced, but the uh, one big matching market uh, run in Japan is. Uh, uh, assignment of nursery schools or daycares. So these are the matching markets for kids. And the, the, um, the, the, each, interestingly, the, the uh, daycare matching markets are heavily subsidized. And hence, uh, flip side of it is that the assignment um, is done by the government. So the local government, actually. So there are a little bit more than uh, 1,700 uh, municipalities in Japan, and they, they each run the uh, formal uh, uh, matching algorithm, okay. And the, if you think about other countries and context, there are many others. For example, um, assignment public school teacher assignment in uh, the one I know well is uh, France, for example, and the e e organ transplantation and uh, transplant. Uh, this translation is a little bit weird, but then um, the e e in. Uh, I, I I heard of an uh, example of the assignment of um, uh, rabbis in the in in the a certain um, a certain branch of uh, Jewish uh, religious uh, organizations, for example. All right. So uh, there are a lot of applications. Okay. Good. Okay. So the time is good. So so far, I have just explained the sort of overall uh, what are the applications. But then, uh, uh, so now I'd like to talk about uh, one or two uh, uh, examples in more uh, detail. And the issue is, so uh, like I said, fortunately, there, uh, the, uh, there is already a lot of uh, uh, um, research, uh, research um, uh, showing how to organize the markets, roughly speaking. But then it turns out that when you would like to apply them in the real world, oftentimes, uh, you know, there are very interesting features specific to uh, the uh, internet applications, uh, such that the off-the-shelf algorithm cannot be used uh, just uh, just by a, a, a using this gear shuttle algorithm. And uh, we need to modify it in such a way that works in the real world. But oftentimes, if you just modify it without really thinking carefully, then uh, the algorithm does not work as well as it can. So, um, uh, Professor Iwama mentioned the uh, Market Design Center uh, in introduction. And uh, uh, this is a research uh, center uh, in the University of Tokyo that I founded. And the, this Market Design Center is um, uh, aimed at doing exactly this, i.e., the uh, you uh, sort of find a uh, sort of like usable way of uh, modifying algorithms uh, and uh, coming up with a good rule uh, and use it in reality in the in practice, and then uh, improve the improve the matching and other kinds of market uh, kind of institutions. Okay, as such, uh, I 
have a bunch of colleagues and students working with me uh, and the uh, um um not only do we write academic papers but also we actually talk to policy makers uh, okay and uh, uh private companies uh, and then actually uh, uh, cooperate with them to use the uh, these uh, ideas uh, in very okay so in the remaining 10 minutes or so or let me quickly talk about these specific um uh, um uh, projects that we are doing okay uh, in this uh, University of Tokyo or Market Learning Center. So the first is the medical residency match. So I already mentioned it several times, so let me be quick. So like I said before, the Japanese medical match is a certain labor market, okay, where the new doctors are, are assigned to uh, one of the, uh, one, of, one of about 1,500 uh, 1, medical or, or hospital or residency programs, okay. And the matching mechanism started in 2003, okay? And the, the idea was to use the, to, uh, they need to actually, in order for the, uh, uh, for modernize the um, uh, medical profession, they decided that they will need to uh, uh, introduce algorithm and uh, ask doctors about where they would like to go to, as well as what are the needs of the, uh, of the hospitals. And they decide to uh, adopt the Gale Shapiro algorithm. Okay, so so far so good. So this is a bit like the United States. In the Japanese context, and I'm pretty sure that uh, this uh, this problem uh, is shared by many of you from other places of the world. The um, the uh, after the introduction of the medical match, uh, the, there was a criticism, and the main criticism is that well. Too many doctors go to uh, Tokyo and other metropolitan areas, right? Uh, okay, so uh, in the context of Japan, the, the, the most of the, the best uh, hospitals are, are in Tokyo, and oftentimes also other good opportunities, such as mating, for example, uh, they, they really concert in Tokyo. So, and uh, the, uh, some public policy debate happened in such a way that, well, because the algorithm is uh, sort of explicitly ask doctors' preferences and try to respect that as much as possible, uh, that uh, led to, uh, that can lead to uh, too many doctors concentrating in Tokyo and other other places, other urban areas, at the expense of the uh, uh, medical care collapse in the rural areas. Okay, and there's some actually the debate uh, on whether that actually happened or not in the data. But what is important for our purposes for today is that this voice was so big that the government actually listened to them, and the government introduced a new regulation in, in uh, beginning of 2009, I think, five years after this introduction of the medical match. And what happened is that they introduced, the government introduced what I call regional caps. So uh, this is for each prefecture of the uh, uh, country, there are 47 of them, the, the government sets the total number, the, the upper bound of the number of uh, total medical residents who can be placed in, in, in hospitals in that region. So for example, in Tokyo, uh, before this uh, new uh, regulation happened, there were about 100, 500 something, 100, 600 uh, doctors in Tokyo prefecture out of, uh, well, about 8,000. So that's like 20%, that maybe that's a lot. So now the government delegation said that the total number of the doctors in Tokyo must be uh, 1,250. Uh, 1, so more than 300 drop. So that's a big number. And similarly for other urban areas such as Osaka and Kyoto. So the hope is that basically that regulation will drive, chase away some doctors from urban areas and hopefully fill in the uh, seats in rural areas, okay? But the, this regulation cannot be enforced unless we also change the algorithm, right? Because algorithm just, you know, let uh, uh, each hospital select uh, among applicants, well, uh, as much as they want it, at, up to the capacity, basically. So uh, there's no guarantee that this regulation is kept, uh, uh, it, it will, will be satisfied if you run the Egan Shapiro algorithm. And the government officials considered changing the algorithm. And um, so um, I call it the Japan style Gale Shapiro algorithm. Uh, so the idea 
uh, is the uh, following. So because the gain Shapi algorithm uh, has been like tried and tested, so let's use that algorithm, continue to use that algorithm, except the instead of using the real capacity of the uh, hospital, that your hospital basically says that I can, uh, my, my program has, has a vacancy, uh, let's uh, end vacancy. The, the algorithm sets the artificial capacity smaller than this uh, real vacancy, real capacity of the hospital. Okay, and uh, basically, it, 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 it forbids the, any hospital to uh, accept more than that artificial capacity. And the artificial capacity is set in such a way that if you add up the artificial capacity across all the hospitals in the given prefecture, then that matches the uh, uh, regional cap imposed on that prefecture. Okay, so the idea is again, try to just modify the Shapley algorithm just a little bit. Maybe this is a simplistic way to modify it, um, but then uh, try to get uh, try to get the uh, uh, regulation being uh, satisfied. But turns out that this is actually a, a costly way to actually e e satisfy regulation. Why? Well, because this reduction of the artificial capacity is done before the anything is known about uh, uh, preferences of the applicants, right? So it turns out that in even in places like in Tokyo, there are hospitals that will fill in the artificial capacity, but also some hospitals may not attract uh, nearly enough doctors, even uh, sort of wasting the uh, artificial capacity, right? Then uh, even though, uh, and uh, that means that actually if this artificial capacity in the unpopular hospital could be used for other hospitals in the same region, which is which needs to uh, uh, reject the doctors because of the small uh, artificial capacity, then the more doctors could be placed without really violating the vision cap. So in other words, this, this simplistic change of the algorithm results in uh, inefficiency. And the, the, here's the, uh, how the algorithm could help. So uh, uh, my own paper with Yuji Okamada um, uh, found a way to do better than this. Basically, um, we can decide how to assign this artificial capacity uh, to in order to, in such a way to satisfy the regional cap based on the preferences submitted by the doctors, because uh, in the current practice, they already do, right? And then that inf that uh, preference information can tell you which hospital in the region should have be should be granted more capacity than others, right? And uh, uh, so that is the algorithm. Uh, we can do it automatically by being a bit careful about the algorithm. And the, here's a simulation result. Okay. Um, sorry for those who cannot read the Japanese. Uh, uh, so this orange uh, orange part uh, represents the uh, unmatched doctors. And the, uh, uh, this top one uh, represents the uh, uh, matches and unmatched doctors when there's no uh, regulation. So, uh, but then uh, if there's a regulation, uh, as in now, and if you run the Japanese Helge Shapley, as you can see, the uh, number of unmatched doctors increases quite a lot, actually almost like uh, 70%. Uh, even if you keep the uh, same algorithm, how, uh, sorry, e e e regulation, however, by being a bit smart about this algorithm, actually you can uh, shrink the e e e uh, number of unmatched doctors by quite a lot. Actually, e I think the number is like one third of the uh, increase in the unmatched doctors because of the relation can be shrunk uh, to one third uh, compared to, as compared to the current algorithm. Okay, so that is the e algorithm. And the, unfortunately, e this algorithm has not been e implemented in the uh, Japanese medical match, uh, but the, e we are talking. And e we actually use it elsewhere when uh, in, in, in the context of uh, labor market, uh, so the e in, e within personnel or organization, personnel allocation, uh, which is the next uh, topic. Okay, I think I have two minutes, so uh, let me be a bit quick. So the idea is basically the same. The, uh, now there's a matching between um, uh, uh, employees and different divisions. Uh, to just give a context, in the Japan, in, in Japan recently, uh, there's a big problem uh, uh, that the uh, assignments of, of of new hires uh, to different departments in the company is so bad and uh, ignore the uh, uh, interest of the applicants uh, of the new hires, and oftentimes they just uh, quit the job. 
And uh, in order to sort of address this question, um, my team has been helping a bunch of organizations uh, to introduce some matching mechanisms. So these two companies are those that uh, said uh, they can actually show their names and uh, we, we helped some others as well. And so far, the outcome seemed to be quite good. Um, although actually measuring the effect of changing the algorithm, it turns out to be very hard in the sense of empirical study uh, because you usually cannot do the usual the, uh, randomized control trial, i.e. the A-B testing. So we are actually doing it right now. Uh, we are still uh, accepting um, actually the partners. So if you know any uh, companies or the e, e, e local governments who might be interested in participating in, in this um, uh, project, please let us know. Okay, so this is basically the last slide before I conclude. Uh, okay, so uh, I have only talked about two specific uh, uh, projects uh, today, but uh, as you can see, um, we are working on many different um, uh, aspects of this matching problem some, and some others. Uh, like in the daycare match that I mentioned, vaccine allocation in the past, and the um, uh, secondary education um, uh, school matching. And uh, the uh, of course, the idea of using game theory and economics uh, does not have to be strictly about the sort of matching problem. And uh, uh, there are some uh, related questions such as uh, uh, this re recycling support. So the question is, the, so when we recycle a, a lot of PET bottles, the, these bottles must be actually quote unquote matched uh, to the e e e uh, companies uh, who does the recycling, and uh, we we study the how to organize this uh, like uh, uh, markets for uh, uh, for uh, pet bottles and the uh, companies um, using the auction mechanism. Okay, so these are the kind of the problem that economists could uh, uh, could work on, and with of course uh, a lot of collaboration with the uh, private companies um, and the uh, and the policy makers. Uh, uh, as you can, of course, imagine, the vaccine allocation was in the collaboration with the local government and the e, e, e daycare uh, allocation. Um, daycare allocation was in, in the collaboration with a private company, Cyber Agent, uh, and also uh, 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 um, uh, the e city government and so on. Okay, so I would like to be able to uh, talk with you. Okay, let me, let me actually shut, shut up right now. Okay, okay. Uh, so that we can exchange ideas uh, in the remaining time. Okay, uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Kojima. Uh, I think that opened up a lot of uh, new uh, doors.